don't want to be told there's nothing. I want you to check that there isn't. Mm -hmm. Check it. Why me? It's your tit. I don't know what it's supposed to feel like. Suppose I do? You ought to. You're the one who touches them. Go to the doctor in the morning. Now, come on. Go to the doctor. Get him to you. You're callous. Get him to examine you. Then he won't go. They feel hungry. They're not mine. I want to know if I've got a lot. Don't get hysterical. I want you to tell me. If I have. You know why it happens? Because frigid women want it to. There's nothing there. Is it there? No. Are you sure? There? There's nothing. Perhaps it's musty. As Sally's mother, I watched her changing and becoming a woman, her body taking on contours. I watched her as her body tried to copy mine as I had tried to copy my mother's. And I watched her as she began to look in the mirror more closely. Then... Sally? What, Mom? Can I come in? Nope. Only quickly. I want an undershirt for sign. No. Come on, Sally. Why not? It's engaged. Why? <laughs> Doctor, I smell. Of course, you've got an infection. If you were an animal, you would have licked yourself to rid yourself of the smell, thus keeping the wound free from infection. Very crafty nature. <laughs> but we've invented antiseptics now. Very clever men. In former days, he would have come to me knowing of my wound. Drawn to it with the same power the hound on the scent of a fox, but not to tear me to pieces, but to lick me clean. Or any other animal of the flock would have come, as ready as the others and as willing with its tongue. Or I would have licked myself alone. At school, we were taught if you prick your finger and get blood on your sewing, the only way to take out the mark is to spit on your finger, a clean finger, then rub the mark with your spittle until it goes. In needlework, we made a friend's nightgown. Can you get a nightie? The doctor. It was brushed cotton, pink with sprigs of yellow flowers and blue ribbons. My mother's still using it for cleaning rags. She's been using it for rags since... Sally is not neat, appeared on my report. The end of the term had come, and I was still taking out... Those tacking stitches because they are too large and not straight. I gave up domestic arts for language. A surgeon is a man who must like cutting and stitching. Can I help you? Yes, I want to see a doctor. Yes, me? Baby. And then A? Yes. And the initial? S. Wait here, thank you. Uh. Morning. Sally. Is that short for Sarah? No. <laughs> And the surname? Bacon. As in A. Thank you. <laughs> We've not got a card for you. Are you registered here? Pardon? Have you seen a doctor here before? Here? No. Well, no wonder I can't find a card for you. If you're not a patient, you should have said. <coughs> Are you a temporary? What? Temporarily. How long is temporary? Will you be in the district for longer than three months? I don't know. Please, can I register? Yes. Well, I'll give you a temporary form to fill in. Is it an emergency? Emergency? Doctor doesn't have to take you on unless it's an emergency. I'm not sure. Well, what are your symptoms? I... Are you a nurse? Not trained, but I've picked up a lot working here. I need to see a doctor. Doctor doesn't have to treat you unless it's an emergency. But I need to see one. I should try another practice, but I need to see one. Why don't you try a couple of aspirins in a day in bed with a hot water bottle? I want a proper physical examination. Doctors here are very busy people. I wouldn't bother them unless it's really necessary. Where do I find another doctor? What do you recommend? The doctors here are very good. Where do I find a surgery? How did you find this one? 
I looked at doors until I came across it. Then I should try the same again. That's real rejection for you, Simon. I'll find another doctor. I suppose so. If you still think something's wrong. I can't be bothered. Well, how do you feel? Fine, but I think I can feel alone. Ask Mom what she thinks. She thinks it's the fibers in my bus thinking because I don't wear a bra. <laughs> <laughs> well, they say you need uplift. Who do? Well... Come on, Simon, who do? All the advertisements you ever see for bras. I've been wearing mine solidly for the past two weeks. Even in bed, it to go away. It doesn't make any difference. Oh, perhaps you haven't the right sort. How come you're such an expert? I read the bra ads. <laughs> <laughs> do you read the ads or do you look at the bras? What's in them, perhaps? I never think of you doing that, Sai. <laughs> you said it was because I was frigid, that I wanted something wrong and excuse. And we can have psychosomatic pregnancies. More believable than breast lumps. What if I have Simon, what if it is cancer? You have to be at least 40 to get it. I reckon it can happen when you're younger. Well, I'm sure your chances are pretty remote. How remote? It's winning the lottery or something. People do win. They're not likely to be you. Suppose not. I must. I must. I must increase my bust. I must. I must, I must increase my bust. I must, I must, I must increase my bust. It's a bit exhausting. <laughs> it's worth it, and it better be. It really is. How many times do you have to do it? Millions. <laughs> you may be worn out. Don't you want to grow? <laughs> yes. Then you have to do it. You have to do it a million times for every inch. One million. <laughs> yes, but the results are amazing. <laughs> <laughs> that means if I want six inches, I'll have to do six. I must. I must. I must. I've only done about 20. It doesn't show until you've done half a million. Gosh. <laughs> and you mustn't lie on them in the night in between. Why not? They get squashed in. <laughs> Do they? They get squashed right in. Then what happens? I don't know. <laughs> don't they come out again? No. <laughs> They get in grown like toenails. <laughs> so what do you do? You have to put lots of pillows in your bed to sleep on. You can't do that. Why? It makes your mouth come up when you're sleeping. Well, what difference does that make? It gives you double chin. You've got the moment. I have it. I've done nearly 3,000 this week, which means I have to draw first. I must. I must. I must. I must. I must. I must. I can feel mine growing. <laughs> I can feel mine too. Miss Bacon, Sally. I heard them calling me as I came back from the theater. Sally, I could hear them calling me as I floated back and made my way through thick grass. Sally, which swished as I walked, and I felt that they couldn't see my head as I parted the green hay and scarlet poppies. I wouldn't open my eyes, but I could hear them calling me. Miss Bacon, Sally, every morning here at 7, because they shake me to make me face the day. Wakey, wakey, Miss Bacon. And do not allow me to slip back. Open your eyes. Even the semi fantasy. That's a good girl. I see the shimmer of purple and green sea. I knew I was still alive and felt a moment of regulation. I wanted to stand on my bed in my white gown and shout, I'm alive. I will open my eyes. They had to take it. What? They're sorry, but they've had to take it off. No. You're all right. It's gone to make it better. It was a malignant tumor. Pepidotal? Yes. Is it all gone? Yes. They haven't left any, have they? No. I'm all right? Right as rain. Would you like something to send me back to school? They said... You will feel some discomfort. Perhaps a little aching and a sense of loss, but that will pass. Are you sure they've got it all? Yes. That's why you can't feel anything. There's nothing there. 
I'm sorry. <coughs> I wouldn't recognize it. What? My boo. I wouldn't know it was mine. I wouldn't. Have a good cry about it. Afterward, you'll feel better. Why do people keep telling me I'll feel better after crying? Do you always do? I cry a lot. And every time I dry my eyes and I think that it's over, it isn't. Look, you have a cry about it. This woman, though not my closest or most amusing, is my oldest friend. She's the most flat-chested. <laughs> I am an ex-lover. 
Because I am an ex-lover, and therefore no longer care about her putting on weight and having to secure her jeans with safety pins, I brought her chocolates. <laughs> because I am an ex-lover, and not quite a friend, I, I bought her a box without a ribbon, not soft centers. Choosing from a store which rated its goodies towards the ceiling, and being in a state of financial cutback, I choose the level just above the jelly fruits. <laughs> She looks ghastly, and I ask her if she's okay. Because he is my ex-lover, I am embarrassed by him being here. Seeing me like this. I tell him I'm fine, remember his smile, and ask him how he is. I tell her that I'm well, and that she looks good. I tell him I'm feeling better than I thought I would, and isn't it a lovely day? I tell her that it's a bit cooler outside than it seems, and that I'm sorry I didn't bring flowers. Well, I tell her it's a bad time to be able to cut flowers, but chocolate, oh, you shouldn't have. How lovely. I tell her it was my pleasure. I tell him I'll get fat. I tell her that I expect the food here it must be dreadful. Well, I tell him it isn't that bad. I tell her that. I tell him that. I tell her. I tell him. I tell. I tell. I I kiss her goodbye when I leave and say nothing about coming again. There are no promises made about seeing each other, and I don't know why I came, unless it was to see that I left a box of chocolates by her bed. I wonder what will become of her. For the first time, I look. Kids, I'm the doctor. I'm the nurse. You're the patient. Why? Because I'm the doctor and she's the nurse, so you've got to be. I don't want to be. You didn't call this. I didn't know we were. Yeah. No, I'm going to do an operation. No, are you going to cut open, doctor? Yes. <laughs> and she's got to take her undershirt off and leave me alone. Doctors have to look. The first time I look. I'm going to cut you open and take all the bandages out. It's still there. No, it isn't here. That's just the strap and the bandages. Hello, sliced bacon. Sliced bacon? <laughs> it's okay, Mom. <laughs> Should I leave you two? Stay, please. I brought you this and these. And I brought you like this and these. And Simon's brought this for you. Mom, you shouldn't have. Is that everything, Simon? I think so. We forgot the flowers. It doesn't matter. I can go back for them. There's no need. Bring them tomorrow. Is there anything else you need? Nothing. I wish you could come home. So do I, Mom. I want to sit in the garden and talk. Lord, they won't believe me. You'll have to go back again now. Well, Dad, I do nothing but. I'm still a lady does anything. Well, they can't stop you going back as many times as you want. Get into that stage where I don't get to show my face again. It's your body. You've got to take yourself seriously. I do, but they won't. Especially this time, it's nerves. I've got the tranquilizers to prove it. You taking them? No. The same old story. Give her something, she'll be okay. Look at the way they fob me off with my assist. Have you had a physical examination? That's what I can't understand. I go in and they ask me what's wrong and I tell them and they write me out another prescription. The last one told me I was imagining it. Four months imagining. Has it gotten bigger since the last time you checked? I don't dare check. I can't bring myself to. Come on, it's every month, every single month. Do you check every month? It's probably nothing serious. Most breast lumps are benign, but you've got to make certain. Scared. Uh, I know. I dread checking. Every month I think, what if I find another? I have to do it when everyone else is out. I check the mirror first just to make sure there's nothing obvious, like puckering or the nipple is burning. I'm so nervous and my fingers are tense. And I have to force myself to touch them. It's like that every month, Sal. It has to be those moments of being frightened of your own body. Do you know how to check? You must do it properly. That way you're going to pick up all the natural masses of the breast. Like this. Your hands flat, your fingers gently together. 
in the back, so far in your hands is the best time. That way your hand just slides up the breast and your fingers will pick up any lumps that are there. Like this. So awkward. No, it's simple and it's quick. How can you forget to do something so easy? I should have offered to check my friend's breasts. Suddenly I am certain. Name? Sally Baker. <coughs> Poor name? Sally Deborah. Age? 29. Religion? None. Next of kin? Simon Baker. Relationship? Brother. Because she has asked me to, I am the one who copes. Sally is my responsibility. I am the one who goes to the hospital and waits like an expectant father. Mr. Bacon? Yes. You are Miss Bacon's brother? Yes. Is she okay? I'm sorry. It was malignant. You had to take the rest. That's what she was talking about losing it. What's important is that we caught the cancer. Can I see her? I want to tell her. It's best that we tell her. You come this evening. Yes. Help her get back to normal. Normal. What's normal after losing a breast? I don't know. What's it like without a breast? What does it feel like? What does she feel? Is it, is it a change or a loss? Is she different? Is there a difference? Okay. I just sign it. You just sign your normal signature there, and that gives us permission to do the operation. I'm fine. Excuse me, Mom. Mind if I fix the headset? What? Headset! Oh, yeah. Right. You're looking lovely this morning. <coughs> Gorgeous day. Yes. What are you in for? Check up. Days in bed, nice and cozy. I suppose I ought to get checked. What's wrong with it? Got pulled out. Got brute strength, some of them in here. Yes. You weren't the one. Pulled it out. Only oh, did it. Four days. Just teasing, huh? I know the kind of pulling you do with a body like yours. I like voluptuous women. I need. My TV test? You banged your breasts. My sports? I have support. I'm being correct. You're overstressed. In childhood ill? You're on the pill? I'm overeating? Hormone secreting. Some unknown pet? Draw wearing is best. Draw side pet? From I'm being, being bad. I'm not. You are too, all girls do. I'm not. Don't you want Christmas? No. I thought girls wanted to. I don't. But you will. I won't. Bet you do. Bet I don't. Go on then, bet. When you get bosoms, you'll get like mom. <laughs> Hello? Hello? Yes? Sally? No? Simon, it's me. Yes, is something wrong? Something's terrible. Okay, okay, I'm listening. I've got something wrong. I found a lump in my breast, and so it could be... Peep, 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 peep. What? Cancer. Crabs? Cancer! I've been talking to my mother. Why? This isn't a secret I can keep stored up about my sister. Morning, Simon. Morning, Mom. Was that Sally calling last night? What? She always calls so late to talk to you. Yes. But what did she say? Nothing. You were on the phone for hours. Shouldn't say anything. Is she well? They found a lump in her breast. Sally's? Yes. Simon. I was silly, Mom. I didn't know what to say. She said she thought she felt something. I thought 
You just never know what's supposed to be there or not. You just don't know. She said it's probably nothing. What's going to happen? She's got to go into the hospital for a biopsy. Mom, she didn't want me to tell you. She's going to write you and dad a letter. I want to know. So I tell my mother, and my mother tells my father, and we don't talk about it at dinner that night. Why, Sal? Why me? Why my daughter? Not aware of being happy or content or not happy. Why me? As Sally's mother, I watched her changing and becoming a woman, her body taking on contours. Why, Sally? Why can't I have a bra? You don't need one. Everybody else has got them. <laughs> you don't have anything to put in it. <laughs> I didn't have a bra until I was 16. Mom, please, all my friends have got them. All your friends? Lots of them. I suppose Zoe has. Yes. Yeah. Zoe's chest is practically a hole. <laughs>
He went after the first one. Thought he caused it by being a bit rough with me there. They say it did, though. Couldn't have the second time. Our marriage wasn't much good before, just <coughs> worse after. Wonder who want me was none. No one would be able to tell. I've got four boys. They'll think we're a scout. <laughs> they did a rat for the first time, cut from here to here. They said it was a shame they didn't find it earlier. Well, I wasn't to know, was I? I did this time, though. This one's a simple. It is meter. Mine is simple. They call it simple. It might be for them, but it's not for us. Not if you have to explain it. Especially to the children. The first time I told them it had gone to make Mommy better. What am I going to tell them this time? It must have happened for a reason. At least that's what I keep telling myself. I can't see one. Can you? It just happens. I could understand it if there was a reason. I could try. You have to be brave. What's being brave? You have it. There's nothing else you can do. I don't want to die. I'm not frightened of it now, but I don't want to. Not until the children. You see, that's what frightens me. What happens to them? For them, it's not how you look, is it? It's being there. That's all I want. I didn't have time to worry, not until I got here. I was just rushing around trying to get everything ready. All I wanted was to get here, get it done, and get out, and get back to looking out for them. I get so tired. I think I can't go on. But you do, you get so strong. And if you're busy, you don't have the time to think about it. I touched myself in search of cancer for two minutes out of the 35,420 there are for each month of the I spend five minutes a day making sure I cross roads properly. More women die of cancer of the breast when it spreads into secondary and are killed every year on the road. More women than all the people I will ever meet. Sal, can I see your tits? Sign in there. <laughs> Why aren't they tits? Tits is crude. Who says tits is crude? Mama. You mean rude. Crude is nasty. <laughs> What's the difference? Ask Mom. Can I see your bosoms then? No. But I want to see some real ones. Why? I just do. They're just the same. They aren't. How do you know if you haven't seen any? We found this magazine in the park. <laughs> We had to put the bits all together. <laughs> it was full of ladies without any clothes on. And I told them that I would ask you if I could see yours because I'm the only one who's got a sister. <laughs> and if you show them to Terry King, he'll give me his baseball cap. <laughs> I'm so alone. 
not you. There's me, and there's the doctors and the nurses and everyone else here. And there's your family and your friends. There are so many women who come here more alone than you and leave twice as lonely. There are some women here who make a fuss because they know at least the fuss will be listened to here. Those women aren't alone. They're just isolated. I want to go home. Of course you do, but we can't discharge you until you're ready. You'll feel better, you know. More like the real you once you're dressed. Yes. Who does she mean by that? I want to be held until the fingers bruise the skin on my arms, until I shake with being held and holding. Did Sister give you your outpatient card? Yeah. I'm glad to have my daughter home. 
She puts my underwear away and does not comment on it, although she is not familiar with it as she was when I was younger and I lived at home and she did my washing and I liked her too. She puts everything in the exact same places in the drawers. It is the same system as my grandmother's. It has been passed down amongst the women of the family. She sits beside me on the bed as she did when I was a child and slept with the door open and the light on in the night. My mother said her mother died of wasting Was it cancer? I don't know. We didn't talk about it. Are the risks of having it in your breast higher if it runs in the family? In the mother's line? Is it because of me? Something in me? Is it my fault? Tell me. Even if it were known, I could not acknowledge the blame on this woman. It's too close for comfort. You check? I never have. Not checking doesn't mean you don't get it. Do it for me. I place my skin on the flesh from which it came and feel her heart beating under my pulse. In the night it was worse. Sometimes in the night I can't sleep at all in case I'm dead when I wake up. I am more afraid of that than I am of being followed at night on a dark street. I do not want to be a victim without a struggle. Do you want sympathy? My boss makes me coffee and offers me a cookie. My wife doesn't need to compensate. She can't. He says. <clears throat> My wife's arms are useless. They didn't catch it in time. She doesn't have any breasts. After the chemotherapy, she lost her hair. I have never seen his wife. I know she's a cripple, and many times we have discussed between ourselves, behind his back, whether she's still faithful. You are one of the lucky ones. I mean, what have you lost, really? He offers me a cookie, and I refuse. Nothing. It's in her bones. She waits for the cancer to creep over and through her until she can't resist it anymore, until she becomes it. My wife will die of cancer slowly. The place which is empty eggs. I have to dress her in the morning. I have to undress her at night. Pretty soon I won't be able to, and somebody else will have to manage it, somebody else after that until her body becomes universal. I have no breast and no lymphoma. It is the thoughts that weigh you down. Whether she thought that because I admired her body, I meant it must be complete. And she says there's no one to blame, but if there's no blame, I can't understand the unfairness of it. She says she's happy and she's been happy, but I wonder if that's because she's unhappy now. In her life is nothing big or exciting, but she says she's fulfilled. I can't bear to see her pull apart. I mean, people are sympathetic. It is my isolation from hope that is drowning me. She wrecked her life trying to keep her body whole. And I did not ask her to be beautiful, but to be there. The sun is warm on my thigh. We sit together in silence and stillness. Um. Outpatient. Gate one. Wait. Block two. Wait. Floor four. Wait. Room five. Wait. Room change. Room six. Patient. Miss Bacon. I went into the hospital to have a lump taken out of my breast, and I woke up. The breast was <gasps> off. It off, so I knew it was cancer. And did they prepare you for the possibility of losing your breath? They told me I might. 
And did they tell you that you have the choice to be woken up after the biopsy? You have the legal right to know whether the lung was malignant or not before they take the breath. What difference does that make? It can make the waking less traumatic. You all to see about getting a proper prosthesis. It needs to be weighted so you don't pull around and compensate. It's a lovely scar. Do you think so? It's not going to stop you from wearing a low-cut dress, a bikini, or anything. Going without a bra? I don't see why you shouldn't have a breast implant done in the future. Sorry? They insert a pad beneath the skin to give you a reshaped breast. They can't give you a life like nipple yet, but breast surgery techniques are improving all the time, you know? I can have it done. I don't see why not. Unlike a prosthesis, it will last for life. How long is that going to be? Your prognosis is good. Five years? Ten? Or am I completely cured? We don't know yet. We haven't found an answer. The doctor goes to wash your hands. Cancer is a cell run right. It is an anarchist in the body. It is the self-supporting growth of tissue. She washes her hands. It starts from a single malignant mutant cell. She has washed her hands. With cancer, you never know if the war is over or if it is just a long ceasefire. Cancer is. I do not want to be victim out of struggle. Help me! Help me! Help me! Sally, here! Here! Sally, here! Sally, here! Wake up! Here. Wake up! It's just a dream. I'm sorry. It's okay. I was, I was running, but I was running after something and away from something else. It's okay. Could you tell when you looked at me? What? That I didn't have it. I thought you did. Did you? Of course. You expect women to. You just thought I did? Why should I have thought anything else? Because it shows. You can't tell. It bulges at the side. When I told my father, he said, that's amazing. It looks better than the real thing. <laughs> <laughs> Which one is it anyway? I... Did he? He did. I, I could have taken money on it. Why'd you tell him? So we get my mom to check. Did she? I think so. I'll call her in the morning and make sure. <laughs> he didn't mind that I told him. I don't suppose so. No. Good. There's nothing to worry about. What do you mean? If he knows, what does it matter who else does? Eve? I love you. Do you? The Amazons were very sexy women. Hence their power. Their captives just swooned and fell at their feet. It was a walkover. <laughs> That's the kind of woman to get a hold of, my father said. A woman who gets all her bras half price. <laughs> you can drink champagne on that. Nice to see you. Feeling better? Are you well? Glad you're back. How are you feeling? We have missed you. Where have you been? How do you feel? I thought you left. Were you ill? You look good. What have they done? I realize they are pleased to see me, and though I have told my boss he has respected me and not told him what has been done, I notice the clothing peg has been rearranged and a bottom one left empty for me. Suddenly I find I am standing naked in front of a mirror watching the movements I can make with my body. And I notice the marking which I thought was livid and red is pale and tired and sunk into the skin. That though there is no breast, there is no hole on me. The skin which is smooth and moves mysteriously. I think it is fine and fun to stand in front of this mirror and feel the air on my skin. I wonder what it would be like in a breeze. In the mirror, I touch myself. She undresses for me for the first time. Does not turn the light out. I thought she would. Do I look or do I turn away? I'm so frightened about being awkward about it. And if I look, do I say? And if I say, will, will she take it the wrong way? 
I don't want to turn away from her. She takes off her jumper, pulling on the sleeves of a butterfly struggling from its cocoon, her bra. I look at this woman and her body, and it is sensuous. All this fucks over a pound of flesh. God moves in mysterious ways. Not as if you're married. It's just a bit of tissue. I watch myself. Sally, Fleur, what are you doing? I've cleaned them twice this week. It's supposed to be good exercise for muscles in my arms. Sally, there's something I forgot to say. It's okay, Fleur. When Simon told me that you had it done, I thought, thank God it hasn't happened to me. Like that, I know. I was so relieved I even went to the hospital not to see you but to get mine checked. It didn't find anything. No, nothing there, thank God. I'm sorry, Sal. I missed you. Did you want me to come? Yes. Well, if you didn't, I figured it was because it brought back memories of your sis. You <laughs> came to see me. So what? I wanted to be a couldn't. Come now. That doesn't make up for it. Look, I felt the same way. When I went to see you, I didn't look at you once, just trying to see if I could see whether they'd done it. I had a horrible nightgown. Thanks. <laughs> That's the one thing I've gotten out of it. Nightgowns, I had one that I've been in, and I had five coming out. All the relatives sent me them. You do look well. Roses in my cheeks and everything. How do you feel? Like a woman without a breast. No. They're being wonderful here. Mom's doing a great job being practical and serious and encouraging and jollying me along. And, you know, Mom. Dad's more discreet about it. He moved the bathroom mirror so I can't see myself when I'm taking a bath anymore. The funny thing is, the more careful they're being, the more I know I'm being protected. You can't be all the time. That's why it doesn't protect me at all. I can't see myself in the bath anymore, but everywhere there are whole women staring at me. You're a whole woman. They're symmetrical women, Fleur. I'm not. And I'm not going to Come on, I'm taking you out to lunch. I can't. Who else is taking you? No one. So you can't? I can't go out there. Who's to know? I know you've had it done and I can't tell. The only clue I got is the way you're cleaning windows and we aren't going window cleaning. <laughs> I don't want to. Of course you do. Pizza and ice cream. Bribery! <coughs> yes. So. Sally, if you don't pull yourself together now, it's going to be too late. The longer you wait, the worse it's going to get. Okay. So there are people out there, millions and thousands of those are women without breasts. What makes you exceptional? They look at me. So they don't bump into you, Sally. Come on. Can I have children? We do advise against it. I can't have children? I wouldn't put it like that. You're probably as fertile as the next one. So why not? I'm not saying you mustn't. Ultimately, it's your decision. But you think it's better that I don't? Pregnancy produces a hormone reaction in the woman's body. We can't tell how it may affect any cancer cells who may have lying dormant. Maybe there would be a reaction, maybe there would be no reaction. We don't know. So you have to decide. Oh, I could? Yes. And I have to decide. Yes. And I'll give you any facts you need to make that decision. When do you think they'll find an answer or something definite? We don't know. But we're finding out more all the time, but we've given you more of that already. Always there are the dark moments. The bad ones, when I wonder why they bothered and why it just waste away. What fate has allowed me to continue? I want to go out like a light, but to shine very brightly. 
dark. This a little moment when I think if they hadn't done this step to me, I might not be here at all having these moments, but they wouldn't have been because I wouldn't have been here. Then I think, what does it matter that a breast isn't there? Because I'm alive. physically revealed. 
Uh, is, is this the way, it's, is, is, was this by your choice or is this sort of the way the script? Because obviously Louise Page and this other play didn't handle it that way at all. <laughs> 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 uh, you're asking me why it wasn't? Uh, yeah, I mean, was this your, was it the choice that you made yeah. or, or, or does the script give you any indication otherwise or? Um, I think the script gives nothing otherwise. Nothing otherwise. Except for the one word that they said. Okay. Yeah. Because I thought, I thought it was something. I thought it was a fascinating, uh, wonderful way to handle uh, a subject um, which in some ways, not to say the subject, well, the, 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 the great, the, all the references to the physical intimacy uh, that the script refers to, but that you got to without ever taking anything off. So to speak, uh, I, I, I thought it was a I thought it was a fascinating choice to make, uh, and uh, that in um, in every case I think it, I think it worked. I think it worked extremely well. Uh, it, it, if anything, it, it may it may even well be that it was by far a uh, a, a better choice. Uh, than if you had tried being, let's say, more realistic or whatever uh, about it. Uh, there's a, oh, I just lost it, a uh, French critic, a uh, French theorist, uh, it won't come right now, but anyway, uh, who somewhere or the other wrote and in this case, he's talking about sensuality and sexuality, but that what is not revealed is more sensuous than that which is revealed. Um, and um, uh, that, uh, that a, and then he goes on, uh, a partially revealed bosom, shall we use the term that was being used tonight, uh, which only just hints at what's there is far more tantalizing uh, than what is there when it's not when, it, when there's nothing there, uh, which I think is a which which I think is a very uh, wonderful way of putting it. And I think in some ways, and as I said, uh, in, in no way or in, in with this play was not a play about sensuousness, but that by not revealing. The physicality of it, it made us more conscious uh, of the physicality of it than it might have uh, otherwise. Um, in fact, what, in fact, I said one of the things uh, started out that is uh, that, that I dislike about this is that I have to want to write notes because if I don't write notes, uh, I uh, I'll forget what I'm doing or I'll forget what I'm supposed to. I'll forget uh, things I want to comment on. And there was a point at which I just said, hell. <laughs> well, I care more. <laughs> if I didn't remember, okay, I didn't remember. Uh, I, 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 but I didn't. So I wasn't ready. Uh, I, uh, I will say, I thought Dustin, I thought Dustin was, I'm going to put it this way because I, I don't want to in any way slight the two women, but I'm going to say I think Dustin was more adept at the transformational aspects, and by that I mean as he went from character to character, more adept at somehow or the other finding some little small detail which immediately told us this is a different character, this is somebody else, we didn't have to even wait for the context told us. He visually had already told us. Sometimes with some, with the two women, or with the, especially the, well, the one woman, but even the other woman, uh, even Sally, is that yeah, Even Sally had to keep changing ages. So there, you, 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 even there, you've got to find something that puts us in different ages than Sally. Uh, I thought they had perhaps not quite gotten to that point. I saw them doing things, but they, and I, I, adept I think is the word I want to use, uh, they weren't quite as adept at it or, or, or doing it with the ease, and maybe that's the better word, 
doing it quite with the ease that Dustin had somehow the other managed to, 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 to let it work with him. But somehow the other it had just an intransformational acting. Uh, it, it, it's exactly that. It, one character just goes into the other character. And how can it just, it just does. It just makes that change like that. And suddenly you realize that, that character, that, that's somebody else. Uh, and uh, it, it's, it's something that needs to be, you, you just, it's, kind, it's a technique uh, that needs to be worked at. And, uh, and you, just, you just keep working at it in one way or the other. And I, I thought it was handled very well indeed all the way through. Um, I do have a directing question to ask. Um, I did not... I don't know where the crooks of this play is. Uh, I, know, I, know, I knew when we got to the end. I thought it was very nice when we got to the end you brought her back into the same blocking, uh, same position that you had brought her, and, and the circle had been complete. We began here, we started, we came back to here, and at that point, I mean, the play is now over. It wasn't just a matter of the words, it wasn't just a matter of the context, it was a matter of uh, that visually, it told me, we're now complete. Uh, so uh, that, is, but I don't, I don't really know wh where is the crux of the play. You mean like the climax? Well, I see, I, because because yeah, climax. The climax here, I think, is a difficult thing. Climax, climax as a term, I think, works better when you've got a play that's fairly straight. In fact, this I think is one of the fascinating things about this play is that it is by no means straightforward. Uh, that uh, that 15 minutes into it, we removed her breast, but then we still spent the rest of the play going back and forth, both before and after the moment, or whatever. Uh, so if we were doing this in a kind of straightforward, and, and this, uh, this, this I think is the, the, the fascinating construction that Louise Page has written this play in, uh, is that. It, that instead of building dramatically to that climactic moment in which she wakes up and discovers that this has happened to her 15 minutes into it or whatever it is, but at some very early point in the play, this gets revealed. So at that point then, it means that there is going to be some other, the, the, we still have the structure of the play and the play the structure is we're still going to need this feeling of arriving at a point which is the crooks, which is a high point. Uh, and I'm not quite sure, I'm not quite sure I know where it was. Okay, do you know? Um, I think it's when she's looking at herself in the mirror and finally accepting, mm -hmm. accepting mm -hmm. that it's okay that she's still mm -hmm. the same person mm -hmm. that she wants you. I, I, I guess that they, if, if that's what it is, then somehow the other, I wished that, that I wish maybe that moment had been lifted a little bit more, or somehow that that moment had been, well, I mean, it's a climax, if you want to go back and use the old flash, it's a climax. Mm -hmm. So at that point, this is, we are where I want to sort of feel that I've now reached this point, and then begin to feel that now the things that are coming after are, and, I, and I'm going to use again the resolution because it's a structural resolution rather than a story resolution. Uh, because this, because the story, because the way Page has constructed this play, uh, we are not following the story in a linear fashion. We're following the story in a, in a quite different kind of construction. But it still means that there's, that there's going to be a crux of it. There's going to be a moment. When, when the production should reach this. And I guess what I got was that the episodes didn't really, one, if you take one episode, the other episode, episode, there began to be somewhat of a, a sameness 
uh, or uh, the, 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 the tempo, the whatever, and they followed one after the other, and some other that I finally didn't want one to be to be there. Uh, since as I've never looked at the script, I've never seen the script before. I don't. Uh, that may be the moment. Um, it may be. It may be. Where, okay, where is that moment in relationship to the place where she says, I have a lover? It's the yeah. first time, the first time. Right. Which one? Well, I have a lover. Do I see when they kiss? It comes. No, I think it's, it's the earlier scene. It's the earlier scene. It's, it, I, I know that's the line. Uh, I think it's where, where, she, where he starts kissing her. And, yeah. and he starts, and she says, stop. Okay, and then is the conclusion of that scene, I have a lover. Yeah. Now, where is that in relation to the lover scene? In, in, in written down on paper. It comes before. Yeah, I meant, I, meant, I meant in the, in the dramatic construction, not in the, not in the story construction. Yeah. 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 I don't know. Then maybe the yeah, maybe the maybe the, the personal examination is it. I, I don't know. That that would be the that would be the one thing I think I would ask. Uh, and that is that somehow I think that needed pointing or lifting or or whatever but just that 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 letting the audience and I said letting the audience know, I don't I don't think I don't think it's a conscious thing going, oh, that's the climax. Most of the time, climax, dramatic climax is anyway. Uh, but uh, but there is there is a kind of feeling that at that moment you you know you've reached it. I mean, as I said, you also begin to know that that the resolution, uh, constructive or structural or story, whatever it is, that the resolution is coming. And I said, and when we got to the end, the end, I knew the end was there. The, the, it was very definite. Uh, everything told me, uh, visually, contextually, we've now arrived at the end of the plot. Uh, and, and I thought that was extremely well done, uh, that, that, that that happened there. But as I, as I said, I, I, I suppose the, the greatest thing I can say is I just quit. I just said, I don't want to, and I didn't. Uh, because I just, who cared? that point, uh, I, I really felt that I mean, they were doing, they were all doing their thing so well, but I uh, why bother picking, nitpicking with this stuff? Who cares? Because I don't. Uh, because I, I, I just wanted to, to react and to go with them, and that's what I did. Thank you. You, you say, you know, it's, it's not sexual play, you know, it's not, but it... No, 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 it's about sexuality. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. about, no, I say it's not a sensual play. Sensual play. Sensual play. It's about sexuality. But it's, it's just so intertwined. The, yeah. the beauty of it, the way she set it up, too, and uh, I like her choice, too, of not, is that, well, for one thing, practically, I don't see how we would, how an actor would take off their clothes and put them back on. Mm -hmm. and, but, uh, the, the climax of, of being like, accepting yourself as a sensual mm -hmm. person, yet yet throughout the play, I mean, he goes back and forth through dealing with it as a sensual body part and a yes. practical body part. Oh yes, and, you know, a body part that can kill you. But that, but that's it. It does. It, it's about it. Rather, well, if you go if you it, it, it's about whereas. Over here, with Kevin's speech, that speech is a it is pure sensuality. In fact, pure sexuality. As each of those foods. <laughs> it is you know, each 
one of them is and is not. We need to go out and let us Never seen um, that that uh, they, they, all of it, it, the picture is now yay years old. But that wonderful scene in Tom Jones, the film, when the two of them are sitting at the table and they begin making love to each other while they're eating, and and, and when the eating becomes as sexual as you have never seen that film. Oh, you must you must see Tom. It's a wonderful film. Oh, it's. it's Wonderful! It's one of Tony Richardson's. It's one of the best things. Uh, and, and Albert Finney. Uh, and uh, uh, I see her. Just lost her name. But anyway. Uh, oh, oh, oh! You must, Susanna Dorr. Uh, you, you must. Oh, get. Yeah, I'm sure we're like about blockbuster. Found that. <laughs> Go get it. Look at it. It's a one. It's one of the great films. When you get to this this table eating scene. Oh. Never thought of food being sexual and sensual, where you'll never think of any other way to see that scene. So, so I, I, I guess, I guess, I guess what I would say is uh, this place clinical. That's what that's what I want to say. Not that it isn't sexual. Not that it isn't sensual, because it is. It is about being a sensual being. It is about it is about if you have been physically disfigured, uh, uh, how can you accept In fact, this is one of the wonderful things about the play. Yeah, you're probably right. Uh, that, that, that the moment is then when, when she can once take the disfigurement and realize that she is still a sensual, sexual, uh, alluring, uh, being and so at that point yes, but the play is clinical about mm -hmm. that. I think I think that's what it, it, I mean. It, that's what it, it, it's a, sort of this clinical approach. I would get in a dictionary and find all the definitions. Yes. Yeah. Is it hey? It's so going. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you did. I'm glad you did. I mean, you need all of them, so I'm going to have to go That's a beat in itself. I'm going to have to go find some more Louise Fletcher. I, I, just, I, I, just, I mean, Louise, 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 Louise Page. Louise Fletcher's an act, actress. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go find some more Louise Page. Because I said, the only other one I know her is this, the Salon And uh, where did you find this one? Oh, I found it last May when I was looking for five thirty shows. And and your apologies for the place for And I begged Jack to do it for I'm glad you didn't. Uh, because, <laughs> yeah, no, because, because, because by the very uh, restrictions that are placed on you, uh, by the time limit there, um, I, I think you would I think you would have had to disfigure the play, quite frankly, to cut 30 minutes out or 20 minutes. You know, I think you really would have butchered the play. And uh, I'm very glad that uh, that that you that you did because uh, having seen this play now in its entirety, I don't want to miss any of its parts. Thanks, <laughs> 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 Thanks, Arthur.